If you followed my tutorial on creating the Folio Flip Album, you're gonna love this update. Today, I'm introducing a brand new way to make the waterfall element. It's faster, more secure, and gives your album a professional touch. I'll show you step-by-step -step how to incorporate this fresh twist into your next project. Hey everyone, it's Lean from coloradolean.com. Welcome back to The Craft Room. Earlier this year, I found a video from Michelle Allen from a creative operation showing a different way to create a waterfall element. After trying it and realizing just how easy it is to make, I had to share it with you. And what better way to share it than to do a video tutorial of my Folio Flip album. So let's get right into it, shall we? So if you have not been on my blog and you have not seen my Folio Flip album, let me just do a real quick run through. This is the original album that I made, and it is really very simple. It just opens up. It has a pocket on the left-hand side, and I have just a couple of very simple little tags in here. And then I have the waterfall element in the center. Now, for this particular album, I did cover the front and the back of the waterfall, which is very pretty. I absolutely love this paper pad. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I will put a link down in the description. Um, and it did not have any type of closure on it. So this was my first rendition of it. And then when I did the video, or when I did the tutorial on the blog, this is the one I made. It has a magnetic closure, which I like. The magnet, I do not like. It is about an eighth of an inch thick, and it is way too thick. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but this paper is puckering up even though I have tape and glue on here. Um, it's just, it's not good. Um, and because this magnet was so thick, I just have a washer on this side. So, you know, it worked at the time. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Again, it has the pocket on this side. And then I just made a few larger tags and a little booklet with some scrap cardstock. Um, this waterfall, I only covered the front. I didn't put any paper on the back. So it is still very pretty. Um, oh, another thing I did was I glued this flap down. In my original album, this flap came up. So let's go ahead and remake this album. I have all of my pieces cut already. Um, so we'll just be doing the scoring together. I am working with some craft card stock from the Paper Studio. This is 12 by 12. And for the cover, let's lay this out like it was. From our 12 by 12 paper, we're going to cut our first piece at eight inches tall by 12 inches wide. From the leftover, we are going to cut a piece that is four inches tall by eight inches long. And then we'll have a four by four piece of scratch paper, scrap paper. So we will set that aside. Let's go ahead and bring in our scoreboard here. So this is our cover. All right, so we are going to score this on the 12 inch side at five and three quarters. And this is a little bit heavier, so I'm going to give it a couple of scores. 
And then we're going to score it at six and a quarter. Whoops. Um, I will tell you now, this is not my favorite craft cardstock. Um, to me, this is more like a very lightweight chipboard and, you know, really lightweight. Uh, but I prefer the Recollections craft cardstock, except they don't make 12 by 12 craft anymore. And I don't know why. So anyway, we'll set that aside and we'll bring in our second piece. And on the four inch side, we're going to score this at three inches. Oh, see, and I keep jumping out. And at three and a half. Yeah, i not a fan of this. Okay, but we are still going to work with it. So let's go ahead and make our fold. And I'm just keeping this here in case I need to re-score something. Okay, so let's go ahead and tuck this away for a moment. And then with our bone folder, let's go ahead and enforce these, reinforce these score lines. Now on my blog, I do have this tutorial written out. And the only thing that's going to change from that original will be the uh, waterfall element. So this is our front and back cover. And then this is our flap. So it will glue together like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some score tape and glue on this little half inch flap here. I think I am going to use eighth inch tape as well. I get a little concerned that my mini albums are going to come apart. So the more adhesive, the better, right? So put that on there. And we'll use our Teflon bone folder to burnish that down. All right, and then I am also gonna add a little bit of art glitter glue to give me just a little bit of wiggle room while I am putting this together. And it will also reinforce the hold as well. Okay, so this is going to go on the back cover. So we will line this up with the score line, but we are not gonna go over the score line. Okay. And then we will burnish that down on the back side. And there is our cover. Just that simple to put that cover together. 
Now, before we go any farther, if we're going to put a magnetic closure on here, now's the time to do it. So we don't forget to do it later. So I'm going to jump off here real quick and I'm going to dig out my magnets and we'll get right back to it. All right, I found my magnets. Um, these are super strong magnets from creativearts.com. I picked these up at the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo, oh, a couple years ago. Um, they are very strong and they are very thin. I am kind of pushing them apart with my fingers to get them separated. Um, let's see, do I want to do, I think I'll do two closures, one at the top and one at the bottom. So I will get out four magnets. And I don't understand why this is, but they come in an odd number. Um, so I have three magnets left over in this package. I have another package uh, tucked over there that has a magnet in it. So I guess that, you know, is a little bit handy. So, okay, these things are crazy. So what we need to do is we need to decide where we want our magnets. Um, we don't want them too close to the edge, obviously, so we can still run um, sufficient amount of glue on the edge. So I think I'm just going to put one magnet there. And then I will put the other magnet right down there. And that'll give me plenty of room. So let's go ahead and take the paper tape off that. And I will take my first magnet and put it there. And then I will take my second magnet and put it right there. Okay, so now to line these up, let's go ahead and put the second magnet on top. And I'm gonna take a smaller piece of score tape to put over the top. And take the top off and that just, it's so easy to do, wow. And the way we wanna do this is we wanna make sure that our edges are straight. So we'll just set it up and carefully close our book so that we can catch that piece of score tape on the other side. And then we'll be able to open up our, our book. So now I am gonna put another piece of score tape over the top. Um, I'm going to leave the paper on for now. And that will kind of protect the adhesive that's already showing on the paper. So we'll get that done. And there we go. Our cover is complete. So let's go ahead and set this aside for a moment. And let's do a little bit of work on our pockets. We will need our scoreboard back. Uh, the pocket piece, let's get my notes out. This is six and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. And we're gonna score this at half an inch on three sides. 
So we will put that in our scoreboard. And I will try and get a quarter inch or half an inch all the way around this time. All right. And then let's go ahead and fold on these score lines. So we do want to get rid of some of this bulk, especially down here. Now, in my original video, I or in my original blog post, I believe I just cut this these little corners out. Um, what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna make some angle cuts. And we're not gonna go all the way to the corner, but we will get it, the majority of that taken out. And then from the top, we're going to make another angle cut up to the score line. And there is our pocket. And let's talk about our waterfall. This I am excited about. Um, the original waterfall is nice. It works. Um, it's semi sort of straight. But they are individual pieces. So my my flap is four inches tall so this entire piece is four and a half inches tall so there's that extra half an inch and the way you put this together is you put this first piece on here you line it up very straight and then for the next flap, you glue that right next to the edge of the first flap. If this first one is not straight, none of it is going to be straight. Um, it's, it's very easy to tell um, that this is not straight. Um, it's better than I have done before. It's not the worst, but it's not the best either. Um, for this type of waterfall element that Michelle figured out, it works best with even number of pages. You can do it with an odd number of pages. Um, in her video, which I am definitely going to link down below, um, she gives a real in-depth direction for doing these. So I'm just gonna kind of gloss over it today, but we are gonna have an eight page waterfall with four pieces of cardstock. These are cut to five and a half inches wide. And this first piece is 11 and a half inches long. The next piece is 10 and a half inches long. And then I have nine and a half inches long and I have eight and a half inches long. And this is going to give us an eight page album or an, I'm sorry, an eight page waterfall. So let me go ahead and bring in my scoreboard once again. And we're going to start with our 11 and a half inch piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to have four inch tall flaps like we have in our other book. And the easiest way to do that is we're going to score on the 11 and a half inch side at four inches. So we will make our score. And then we're going to rotate this around and we're going to score at four inches.
So we have a four inch flap, a four inch flap, and then we have a three and a half inch base center piece. So this three and a half inch piece will be adhered to the back of our folio base. So there's our first piece. And now we have our 10 and a half inch piece. And again, we want a four inch flap. So we will score this at four inches. Rotate it and then score at four inches. And then for our next two pieces for the nine and a half and the eight and a half, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I will score it four inches. I will rotate it and score it four inches. So I'll be back when I get these two pieces finished. All right, so I have my pages finished and I have them folded. And let me just kind of run through with you how this is going to go together. So we have our 11 and a half piece, 10 and a half, the nine and a half, and the eight and a half. And we are going to adhere them together just like that. So yesterday when I was trying this out, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, hey, I've seen this before. And this reminds me, <clears throat> this reminds me exactly of Laura Dennison's Stack the Deck bookbinding system. Um, and it really is. So you have your first page. And then when you glue your second page in, these score lines are going to be half an inch apart. And then you put your next piece in and it will be half an inch. And then your last one is half an inch here and it will be in the middle of this one. So it will be half an inch. So it is really kind of cool. And then when it folds over, and this is kind of a janky way to do it, but when it folds over, then your waterfall element will look like this. And the pages will flip up and you will have a half an inch section right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put score tape on the backs of all of these pieces, except for this one. And once I get that all done, I will be back with you and we'll move on to the next step and I'll show you how I line these up. Okay, so we are back. I have score tape on the back of all of my pieces. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm going to use my scoreboard because it has a nice ledge on it so that everything can stay, hopefully, fingers crossed, as straight as possible. So I have my 11 and a half inch piece here on the scoreboard. And I am going to remove the backing from my score tape. And as always, I'm going to put a little bit of art glitter glue onto the tape so that I have a little bit of wiggle room before the tape sticks completely. Now I'm not gonna take this glue or the tape over the score line. I wanna make sure that that score line is completely free of any kind of adhesive. And then I'm going to bend this back, wipe the glue off my fingers, of course. And I am going to line this up on the four and a half inch line. And 
and I want to make sure it is as straight as possible. And then I will take my bone folder and burnish that down. Now it does look like I didn't fold this perfectly straight. Perhaps I can adjust that now. But seriously, if everything was perfectly straight on something I made, y'all would think I was crazy or someone else was making it. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to the nine and a half inch. And again, I have it taped. I'm going to remove the tape and put some glue down. And then I'm going to line it up on the five inch mark. So it will be like that. Okay, so to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to keep this folded in half so I don't have to figure out how to get it that way like I did with the last piece. And again, I'm not taking my glue over the score line. And then I'm going to line it up on the five inch line. Okay. All right. And now for my last piece. And I will line this up at five and one half. Now this is really handy having the scoreboard there and the glue on the back so that it doesn't stick down when it's not supposed to. I am having trouble with this one. Why am I having trouble with this one? Five and a half. Five and a half. Okay, so again, it is just a little bit crooked, but like I said, if it's not crooked, it's not made by Lean from ColoradoLean.com. <laughs> And I just have to laugh at that all the time. Um, yeah, it is a little bit crooked, but it is not bad at all. In fact, it is much better than the waterfall in the book. So there we go. I mean, it's straight. It is one piece. Um, yeah, they have half inch spaces. Half inch gussets is the proper term. Now in the album, you can decide if you want to adhere this entire piece down or if you want this last flap to go up. Um, I think personally, I'm going to adhere this entire piece down to the back of my album. Um, I just prefer it that way. And uh, so, yeah, there we go. There is our waterfall. Again, if you would like a more in-depth explanation on how this is made, how to determine uh, the number of pages you want, um, definitely check the description below for the link to Michelle Allen at A Creative Operation. And uh, I will definitely link this video for you. It is very informative. Definitely take your screenshots 
and make this waterfall. All right, so now we need to take all of our pieces and we need to put them together into our completed book. So I'm gonna get this mess all cleaned up and I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, it's time to move on to the next step, decorating our folio flip album. I am using the Recollections Paper Pack Autumn Blaze. I love the papers in here. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, I have already cut all of my pieces and I have added the tape to the back of them. So let's go ahead and start with the covers. Um, I have picked these paper or this paper for the back cover and the inside. So let's go ahead and open this up and we'll get this first piece put on. Um, I already have the score tape put on here just to save a little bit of time. Um, the large cover pieces are cut to seven and three quarter inches tall by five and a half. Let's see which way my leaves are going here. And then we will just center this in here and there is the back and then let's go ahead and put this one in the on the inside so we can get it out of the way um when i when i made my first two albums um, I did have a piece of pattern paper in the center here in the inside um, because my waterfall is five and a half inches wide and that is how wide the pattern paper is. I'm not putting pattern paper on this side. Um, I think the waterfall with the beautiful paper that I've picked is going to be enough color there. So I'm just not gonna worry about that. So now let's go ahead and put our front piece on. Um, I'll kind of show you how I've got this. I have this beautiful piece that will go here. And then I'll put this piece right here on the inside flap. And then this will be on the outside flap. So I think that will be just a, a really nice look to it and a nice flow when it's open. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to take the tape covers off of my magnet so I don't forget. And I want this beautiful dark maroon to be on the left-hand side. And pardon my head if I'm in the way. Oh, already I like this better with the magnets. You can tell they're there, but they're not protruding like the other ones were. And now this piece will go here. So let's... Remove the paper from these magnets. Get that line up. And I love that maple leaf right there. It's so pretty. And now we will put our last piece on this side. And there is the beginnings of our folio. Let's go ahead and let's do the pocket next. 
I have the pattern paper cut for this. And this piece is five and a quarter by two and three quarters. Now, if you wanted to um, have a little bit of distressing on your covers, um, the best time to do that is before you start gluing anything together. So I have already missed that particular window. Um, so the way I want to make sure I want to do the pocket is I want to make sure this flap is behind the side flaps. Um, that way, when I stick something into the pocket, and I'll just show you with this scrap, it won't run into this. So I am just going to lift this tape up a little bit here. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of art glitter glue on there. So with the glue involved, let's get that out of the way. Just put a little bit of glue there. And then I will pull these back a little bit and put just a little bit of glue on there just to kind of help tack this down. Because like I said earlier, this paper is almost like a very thin chipboard versus a what I would consider a cardstock. Um, that's one reason why I don't care for it as much. Um, I, I really wish that Recollections would bring their 12 by 12 craft color cardstock back. Um, it was a beautiful color. It was a regular cardstock feel. And I just... I just liked it better. What can I say? Um, I guess I am a cardstock snob and I'm okay with that. Okay, so our pocket is going to go right here on the front cover. So we'll just go ahead and take the rest of this paper off. And I am gonna put more art glitter glue on here as well. I want to give myself enough wiggle room as possible. Um, if you recall, this pocket is, the finished pocket is five and a half inches wide. So it is just as wide as our pattern paper. So I could have um, put the pocket in first and then used just a little bit of pattern paper. I wouldn't have had to have come all the way down. And then I'm going to line that up quarter of an inch from the side. And I got a little high on this side, but that's okay. And then I will, I'm just gonna press this down really well. And I will take my little scrap paper here and I'm able to get that all the way down. Okay, so there is our pocket. So now all we have to do is put our waterfall in. Now I did go ahead and I put my pattern paper on here already. Uh, we all know how to put pattern paper on here, and this did take a moment or two. Um, I have one inch score tape on the back, and I'm going to put more art glitter glue on there as well. Um, for the fit, it is five and a half inches wide. Um, it is not quite as tall, so there will be like, you know, about a quarter of an inch top and bottom, and I'm okay with that. Um, one thing I could have done 
was I could have, <clears throat> excuse me, I could have just put score tape on the sides and left this back part open for a pocket. Um, I didn't want to do that in this case. I think perhaps to make that work really well, um, take this down to maybe six pages and then it would be shorter so you would have more room. Um, I don't necessarily want things hanging outside of the top of my mini albums like that. So, <clears throat> so I opted not to do that. And then again, this is five and a half inches wide. So there will be just a little bit of space on either side. And there we go. Um, another thing I could have done but chose not to is to put uh, extra paper in between. And I am not putting paper on my insides or outside seams this time. But there is our folio flip album. It is so simple and so easy. Um, I did make some photo mats or journaling cards with some of the scrap paper I had. Uh, let me tell you how much this one is. This one is five by seven. So you can put a really nice photo on there. And then I have this one, which measures four and a half by six and a half with that beautiful paper. And then I have another one that is again, four and a half. This one is five and a half inches tall. And then I have a little booklet that is four inches wide by six inches tall. And that is just a little booklet. And these will fit so nicely right here in our little pocket. Well, I say they'll fit nicely. There. There it goes. So nice. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me for today's folio flip album with an updated waterfall element. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make Michelle Allen's stacked waterfall. Don't forget to hop over to her page and show her some love. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. Bye.